All right, to 445, and we'll kick off this look at weather with a live perspective here from the top of the city of Fort Myers. Thankfully, conditions are a lot quieter now as compared to just a few hours ago when a, a fairly nasty uh, trailing rain band moved across the city. It certainly added on to the pretty impressive rainfall totals we've picked up now since the, this, the storm situation basically began. Uh, some of the dual polarized Doppler radar returns show since the, the influences of Debbie started becoming apparent in our area, uh, most backyards in Lee County have seen between four and up to seven inches of rain, even more so in areas of Collier County. Basically everything in purple here is upwards of seven to eight inches of rain since things got started and across Charlotte County, especially toward the coast. Uh, there have been some really you know, remarkable numbers here. In some cases near Englewood, uh, we're going up and above nine inches and there's a lot of areas of Sarasota County just north of there that have had more than a foot and a lot of flooding is ongoing right now in areas of Sarasota. Now, if you look off to the west of Sarasota and Charlotte County, you'll find some leftover showers and downpours. These are moving our direction based on where they are right now and how fast they're moving. They should be approaching the Englewood area by 556 here tonight. Uh, they're to the north of Rotunda and to the north of Placida. The showers and thunderstorms that were over Fort Myers and Cape Coral just a few hours ago, those have since moved across areas of western Henry County. Moving along fairly quickly here, forward speed is a good 17, 18 miles an hour. So what's left over here should be close to the Moorhaven area as we approach 520 here tonight. In Collier County, there is a line of showers that extends from Ave Maria to the eastern side of Golden Gate Estates, and everything here is racing toward the east northeast, so pushing toward Highway 29 and then headed toward the eastern side of Collier County. Big picture, uh, you can tell, of course, there is still more showers and thunderstorms upstream over the Gulf of Mexico. Our winds are on shore from the west and southwest, so we will still have the opportunity for some additional showers and thunderstorms before the night is done. Of course, the rain that's moving through here today and later on tonight is still leftover moisture trailing behind what is back to Tropical Storm Debbie across the northern portions of Florida. And just for a moment, I, I wanted to express how remarkably similar the path of Debbie ended up to Hurricane Adalia last year. Now, if you think back what happened locally during Adalia, there was a lot of coastal flooding in that hurricane. It was primarily worst across areas of Charlotte County and areas like Punta Gorda. But look at how similar the path lines were here when they were parallel to our coastline and they made landfall less than 20 miles away from each other in Taylor County. So in less than one year, 341 days apart, not one but two hurricanes made landfall in Taylor County, Florida. It's a rural county. There's only about less than 22,000 people live there, but that's really, really remarkable remarkable how similar those two hurricanes ended up. Now, as you recall, after Adelia, we had plenty of lingering moisture around for several days afterwards. So as you'll find in the forecast on Tuesday, the overall wind direction will still be from the west and southwest as the swirl around the system continues to move to the north of us. And with that, we'll again notice some showers and downpours moving along the breeze, everything moving from the Gulf of Mexico toward the other side of South Florida. And though the winds won't be as strong as earlier this week, they, they will still be fairly breezy from time to time. Temperature wise, though, we are going to start to heat things up eventually. We'll be back in the low 90s tomorrow and then more in typical temperature territory by Wednesday and Thursday. That should push our highs by Wednesday and Thursday to around 93 degrees. But because the winds will be onshore through much of Wednesday and Thursday, that motion from the Gulf of Mexico to the other side of South Florida, that'll be the storm motion as we move through the middle parts of the week. With so much humidity lingering, though, the temperatures at night are going to be very warm, even for our part of the world, uh, staying 80 degrees or warmer at night all the way through the first half of the weekend. Uh, Elise, back over to you.